And welcome back to another wonderful episode of That Sewing Blab. We are so happy to have you join us tonight. And for those of you new to the show, I'm Myra. Hi, Myra. And I'm Dawn. And we're thrilled to be here tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. And oh my gosh, Dawn, tell them about how wonderful that show was last week with the return of David Page Coffin. Oh my gosh. It was amazing, just amazing. Yeah, it's it's the second time we've been able to interview him. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a great way to kick off our shirt month um, because obviously he knows a lot about shirts. I mean, his books are kind of almost textbooks on it and all the various aspects and his new fitting one is very interesting because it does think about things a little differently. So yeah, what we were just discussing, Myra and I mentioned, it, we are actually kicked off shirt month. Yes. So um, for shirt month, we had David Page Coffin on at first, and then mm -hmm. this week's show, we have some expert shirt making tips from some of the fabulous people in the sewing yep. community. And the last uh, week of the month, we have some refashioning of dress shirts, and we still mm -hmm. have some openings if you would like be interested in um, sh refashioning a shirt or sharing a shirt that you refashioned on the show with us. If you want to find out more about that, just go to our That Sewing Blab Facebook group. There we go. Yes. Now I'm going to join that refashion. Are you Dawn? Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to start posting in that group. I have been like tr tr trying to put things <laughs> on mannequin and oh, they're hilarious. I, I'm not so good at this, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> yes, so yeah, yes. definitely check it out. I can't wait to see yours, Myra. And I know yeah. that our foreign correspondent, Maria is also working. Well, I've seen the finished one, so it should be very exciting. <laughs> So goodness, so we have three fantastic people coming on tonight. Uh, Dwayne McLeod from Mainly Menswear, Daryl Graham from Daryl Thomas Textiles, and Topeka, you guys know Topeka. She is from patternreview.com. So yes. I cannot wait to hear what these guys are gonna say because I know I'm gonna learn something and that gets me kind of excited. So, <laughs> so we'll start off with the first person um, is going to be Dwayne. Yes. And Dwayne was actually, let's see, no, Dwayne wasn't with us before. Daryl was with us. Yes. There's yes, a lot of Darryl. Dwayne tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I will pull up as well. We have a nice little show card here while we're waiting for him to come up. We'll talk a little Hi, bit. Hi, he came oh, in very is. quickly. Hi, yeah, Dwayne. Hey. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> we have a little, we have a little sh a card, uh, just, you know, for those of you people who haven't met you before, just this super basic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> very nice shirt. I like the shirt. <laughs> I got described as like, uh, I'm an old man who wears nice clothes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nothing yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> I, I don't think that's it at all. So for anyone who hasn't okay. met him before, he blogs over at Mainly Menswear. Um, yeah, definitely he features vintage patterns, but tailoring, he has really lovely photos of step-by-step -step stuff so you can kind of see what he's really doing. And he doesn't chase trends but he is very very fashionable like yeah like, yeah you, he's not a fuddy daddy are you at all <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> actually i'm pretty good i can be pretty conservative at times <laughs> but uh yeah i think uh shirts are a way to have fun with uh what we wear so uh tonight i'm wearing this is my hello kitty shirt um uh this is this fabric yeah. is uh this is um a liberty fabric that uh somebody who follows my blog sent me um and said i just want to see what you can make with this uh there, there wasn't enough to make like a whole shirt so uh it has like various uh kind of gingham uh accents and stuff on it, it has cool. a little pocket on the sleeve uh just cool. it's, kind of a, it's kind of a fun shirt this is what the crazy uncle uh wears for easter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wow, I didn't know they did a Hello Kitty print. <laughs> yeah, there was like a whole Hello Kitty line at Liberty. So this is, you know, something that I would never buy, but somebody uh, sent this to me and it's a really special shirt. I bet that gets very special comments <laughs> from your house. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were hoping that you could share some of your amazing tips on shirt making. Okay. All right. I've been thinking about this since you asked me to be on this show. And uh, I guess my, my number one tip is that 
if you're going to be making shirts, I think you have to be in the right sort of headspace for it because there's a lot of uh, precision sewing involved. And I think if you're not up for that, um, you're not going to really enjoy it very much. So I think the first thing is that uh, you have to be, you have to really want to get into the details and be as precise as you can be. Um, and, and th that's what makes for me a, a successful shirt. Um, uh, and if, if there are beginners out there, and I'm sure that there are, um, I think you, you definitely want to have David Coffin's first book. Um, it, because it's just full, it's full of all kinds of information. I don't know. Do you guys have, have it there? No, isn't that the one I that you have told it, me about? I should, I should have it and hold it up. But it's like his first book. I and, believe that Dawn has it. She um, yeah. actually referred me to that book. She said yeah. that it would be a great one to take on first. It is. There's, there's a ton of information there. But there are also like full-sized patterns um, that you can copy off. Um, he goes into great detail about um, how to make a tower placket, which is, which is this sort of thing on a sleeve. Yes. Um, and um, so it's a... It's, it's, an amaz it's an amazing resource. So I guess I would start there. Um, Thank you, uh, Dwayne. Yeah, I'm just going to ramble on here. You know that. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. <laughs> that's what we want. That's what we want. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, boy, um, basically, uh, my own shirt making experience. I'm I'm really drawn to vintage patterns, um, and I and I'm always looking on Etsy and on eBay for like interesting menswear shirt patterns because there just aren't very many. And I'm I'm like really drawn to like patterns from like the 50s and the 60s. Um, and I I just like have a couple of them here. Like this, this cat here, this is like my go-to shirt pattern. Um, it's a it's probably from the 19th, early 1960s. It's a basic baggy button down shirt. And I've kind of tweaked it um, here and there and have sort of turned it into my TNT pattern. Um, and, you know, I, I'm always, this shirt, this is another shirt that I really, really like. Um, it just has really cool details on it. It has these great, like, kind of pleated pockets. It's got this back. I don't know if you can see it. That's got like yes. a pleat and little buttons. And it's like, you just don't see this stuff no. uh, in modern patterns. And so, um, so I'm always, I'm always looking for, <laughs> I'm always looking for them and, uh, and looking forward to making them. Uh, this is a, this is, this is one I haven't made yet. And I, I mean, this thing is so far out. I mean, look at this. It's got <laughs> Crazy curved like yoke and he's and it, it's just like I can't wait to make this damn shirt anyway. What's the things no. on the back? <laughs> oh, it's got it's got these crazy tabs, these like button tabs on the back. They're huge. Um, they're ginormous, <laughs> but it could be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, you need to put your phone in there. Of, <laughs> yeah, it's just sort of like. Uh, Mad Men kind of thing, you know. This is what, uh, whatever. Uh, this is what the Draper, <laughs> the Drapers would wear. To, Don Draper would wear for his backyard barbecue or something like that. Uh, so uh, another. So I'm just rambling here, kids. Um, I trace off all my patterns um, using. Um, a product called uh, Swedish tracing paper, and mm -hmm. like what it, I I'm kind of running low, but this is what it looks like. It's this sort of like non-woven kind of stuff. It's super strong, and and the reason I use it is it makes it makes like adjusting a pattern really easy. You can 
cut, you can slice it and tape it back together. You can, it's really versatile. You can even sew it. So, you know, from my experience, like the sleeves are always way too long on patterns for me. Um, and so I'll just like trace off the sleeve pattern and, and take a, like a tuck on it and just run it through my sewing machine and boom, I've made the adjustment. It's super stuff. Um, and you can get it, uh, like on Amazon. I think it comes in like a, t maybe like a 10 yard roll maybe, but it's super stuff. And I, I trace off all my patterns, um, onto it. I never thought about actually sewing with it. I use like you the, can. the yeah. medical paper, but you can't really do that with the, the medical see-through paper, but with the Swedish tracing paper, if you could sew on it's it, a, that. Yeah, you can do, you can, do, you could make, you could make a garment with this stuff. <laughs> you really could. You could make a whole shirt. And, you know, I've seen uh, guys, you know, on various blogs or on Instagram that, you know, um, are, trying to make maybe design a collar for a shirt and they'll just sew it up with this stuff as like a trial you know it's like a trial thing like a, a muslin, muslin yeah yeah it's super, it's great stuff i i highly recommend it um great tip uh anyway continue <laughs> continue <laughs> along as i ramble on um, no, you're, you're doing great thank you yeah. um uh you know Oh, I'm thinking about shirts. You know, what are you, what to, what are you looking for in a shirt? You know, I, I'm sure everybody's looking for something a little different, but basically I'm looking for like a shirt um, that has a collar on a stand um, that has a yoke. I think that's really important. Um, you don't, ha you don't have to worry if it doesn't have like, um, like a sleeve placket because you can add that. If you have David Coffin's book, you can just trace off the pattern in his book and boom, you got it, right? So if the yeah. pattern, you know, if a lot of patterns don't have that little detail, but if you want it, it's really easy to add. Um, trying to think of other things. I like a shirt that has like a separate um, kind of placket band not one that's just folded over and you put some buttonholes in it. I, I'm always looking for one that's that gets sewn on. I just think it's a more, I don't know, it's kind of a more tailored kind of look. And it's the it's thing that, you know, it's the thing that you would find on a ready to wear shirt. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm always trying to shoot for. I I want I want my shirt to look like well, actually, I want it to look better than a shirt I can buy. <laughs> but um, but I want, you know, I want all of those details. And so when I'm, you know, looking at some of these vintage patterns, you know, a lot of people, especially on Etsy, will, you know, give you like extra photos of like the back of the envelope and maybe some details inside. And so you can kind of get a gist of uh, what you're what you're going to get, what you're going to be work working with. Anyway, um, good tip. Okay, I keep. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. So uh, yeah, we probably have room for one more, and then we have a question for you as well. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, uh, anybody who like follows me on Instagram or follows my blog knows that I am like a bastaholic. I like I like want to baste every everything. And um, I just thought that I'd share like a little bit of like a, a little basting thing here <laughs> tonight because I think a lot of people hate it. And mm -hmm. I think the reason is, is that you're just not using the right thread. And <clears throat> this is, um, you really need some cotton basting thread. And this is like a lifetime supply of this of like this is an italian um basting thread cotton basting thread and you can probably buy this for like five or six dollars i'd say for all of this and it has it the advantage of this is that it does not tangle 
And mm -hmm. you can just reel off a piece, cut it, and you can baste your heart out with this stuff and it won't tangle. And mm -hmm. this particular kind, the Italian kind, is a little bit on the fuzzy side. And I really like it because it just, it grips, it just grips better. Um, because what I'm trying to do is just, I'm trying to position things um, without pinning them. Cause I hate getting stuck with pins. I hate yeah. it, I hate it. So, <laughs> so I would much rather, I'd much rather pull off a little, a little bit of like basting thread and baste something together and then run it through the machine. Um, so I can't, I just can't recommend uh, like real basting thread enough. Another kind that you might find in like um, in a tailoring supply place is um, is like a num. This is called like a number forty basting cotton basting thread, and it comes on a nice wooden spool. Again, this will last a long, long time. But this is <laughs> this this has a smoother finish. It's very slick, and um, uh, it. I, and it's stronger. Okay. It's not as, it's not as easy to break. And I guess it's probably a personal preference. Um, mm -hmm. but I kind of, I kind of, I'm hooked on this one, uh, just because it's, it's a, a little bit softer and it just grips a little bit better. But, uh, anybody who's into like making shirts, um, I think, man, go out and buy some basting thread because you're going to want to position like, uh, uh, like your cuffs, at your cuffs and, and, you know, eventually you're going to have to, you're going to have to sew around the inside of the stand. And rather than have like 50 pins, like all, all around that, you could just like baste that in place and run it through your machine and boom, you're done. Yeah. I just can't say enough about it. That is a fabulous <laughs> tip. Thank you very much. And that's, what it's, that's what it's about tonight, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. We even <laughs> about okay. That Actually, we it. have three if we have a chance. <laughs> yeah, okay. we have um, one of the questions is specific to that thread as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yes. What is the question? You want me to read it, Don? Yeah, oh, sure. Okay. The first question is uh, where do you purchase Swedish tracing, ugh, tracing oh, thread I get and it. basing thread? I get um, I get my uh, Swedish uh, paper on uh, Amazon, and so if you just search for Swedish tracing paper, it'll pop up, um, and uh, you know you'll have it in a couple of days. Um, okay. And uh, thread, okay. yeah, basting thread, like a you know like a like a tailoring supply place. Um, Actually, yep. on the, in the comments, it looks like, I'm sorry, I don't wow, mean to interrupt, Dwayne. No, yes. no, no, go, 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 go. Yes, yeah. it looks like one of our viewers has recommend, says that um, Wawak carries yes. that size. Yeah, yeah. Another source would be um, like B. Black and Sons, which is mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. They sell a lot of tailoring supplies, and you okay. would get that. Um, th this stuff... Um, I think I probably got it on Etsy, maybe. I think if you oh. might uh, search for like maybe um, Italian basting thread or something like that, you might find it. Um, yeah. yeah. Great. And we have another one. Um, why do you look for yoke on patterns? Is it a perf oh. personal <laughs> preference? Well, I think, okay. <laughs> um, uh, I think it's essential for, especially for a man's shirt. I think it's really essential because you end up with like two layers mm -hmm. of fabric around the neck, right? Mm -hmm. So it just gives more structure to the shirt. Okay. Um, you know, um, if you're making like uh, like a camp collar shirt, uh, um, well, this is like a, this is like an example of one. Uh, this is one where there's no stand. I think probably people understand okay. that, right? So, um, <clears throat> so in that, when that, you have to like sew the collar on and then you're going to have to do some hand stitching to do the other part, right? To 
to make it. Um, yeah, but that but that can be fun too, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. This shirt, this shirt actually, oh my god, I'm talking like crazy. This yeah. shirt, this shirt actually has what's called an Italian collar on it, where um where it's like this big crazy piece kind of thing that comes around. And I think uh uh, uh David Coffin talks about it in his uh second book, the uh, the pattern making book. Um, it's called like an Italian collar, and it's really kind of a fun, it's kind of a fun thing. Yeah. I, so I have a question for you, Dwayne. Um, okay. We have, we have to get going because we have two more people coming. I on. know. <laughs> was, was, was this painful, or do you think you'd consider coming back on the show? Because obviously people oh. have more questions for you, so they would absolutely <laughs> love to see you again. Um, would yeah. you oh. con consider coming I back would. on? Oh, my oh, God, of fabulous. course. This has been so much fun. Can I do one more quick one? Okay. All right. Yep. Sure. Super this. Quick. this is another. This is a secret weapon. This is um, uh, wonder tape. And uh, Kyle, I know that <laughs> Kyle Burkhart is on here, and uh, she actually sent some of this stuff to me. And uh, I love it. <laughs> oh okay. yeah. I mean, as far as shirt making goes, let's you know, this is terrific when you're trying to like match a pocket. Um, even, even like the cheapest men's shirt, say it's a striped shirt that you buy in like a discount place, that pocket will be like perfectly matched. And that is like so hard to do for a home sewer. And <clears throat> this like double-sided tape is like a miracle because you can like, <laughs> you can basically stick that pocket on and line up your stripes or your plaid or whatever and then when you actually go to stitch it your your foot and stuff isn't going to be pushing it out of the way what usually if you don't have it what happens is as you're stitching around your presser foot is eventually going to make all your lines like go cockeyed and you'll be <laughs> pissed and you'll want to rip it out but this stuff this stuff is a lifesaver so go out and get some <laughs> cool love that tip love it love it love it those were amazing tips thank you Jane. all right oh my god it's been such a pleasure to be here i, I never dreamed i would do this <laughs> and i will i will email you about coming back again so <laughs> all right okay. okay all right thank we you can talk about more stuff okay bye bye <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> and you all, we're sorry we can't get to all his questions, but we do have a few more people coming on and hopefully he will come back and he'll answer those questions. Yes. And um trying to find the fabulous Daryl from Daryl Thomas Textiles, Daryl Graham. Ah, I lost him in the list. <laughs> Daryl has been with us uh, recently before. So he's coming back. Um, he's coming back oh, to there. visit us again. <laughs> he just said here in the comments. There we go. <laughs> so he is coming on. So Daryl, we made a little little spiffy graphic for you too. So we'll pull that up. And this is the Daryl graphic. He's the owner of Daryl Thomas Textiles. Right, Myra? <laughs> yep, yep. And hopefully he won't hold me to coming. To <laughs> hi and welcome, welcome Hello. back, Daryl. How are you? I'm wonderful. Lo How are you? And you are coming to Frocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Love that shirt you have on. Oh my god! Thank you very much. Thank very you. nice. Uh -huh. Thank oh you. yeah, very nice. Very nice. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I I had put on the card that you're based in Ottawa. Lucky for me. Um, but you also sell online, and there's a link in the description. Just like when we were talking about Wayne, uh, Dwayne, sorry. The links are in the description on Crowdcast. It's up above, and in YouTube, it's down below. He's uh, Daryl Stocks, yes. gorgeous designer fabrics, heart-stoppingly gorgeous designer fabrics, and he really does focus on his store on uh, fantastic customer service. So you'll have to stop by if you're in the Ottawa area, and if not, check out his um his um sorry his web page. And he also teaches sewing classes himself. And you even have guest people come teach sewing classes at your, your I guess, your yeah. store. So it's very really fabulous. Sure, and yeah. you mentioned, maybe you shouldn't have mentioned, that you absolutely love sewing shirts when you were here last time. So when this came up, I was, we were like, Daryl, let's ask Daryl. 
I love making shirts. Absolutely love making shirts. And good edit too, looking at the one you have on. You did make that one, didn't you? I did. I started 25 years ago when I, I finished school and I started teaching 15 years ago. So I'm, that's the one class that I will not allow anyone else to teach other than me because I really want to control my baby and I love making shirts. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Very fabulous. And Daryl was on for episode 138 previously. So if you want to learn more about Daryl's background and uh, very exciting and see some of the fabrics he has at the store, definitely check that one out. But tonight he's joining us to share some of those skills that he's picked up along the way. <laughs> I will do yes. whatever I can to help. <laughs> so when I teach my students, I more or less tell them that there's always eight essential pieces to a shirt. And the mm -hmm. one that everyone always forgets is the tailored placket on the sleeve. You have to have a tailored placket on the sleeve. So when we teach shirt making, um, most of my clients are women, um, which is fantastic, but I'm getting a lot of men. Um, one of our followers on Instagram, um, his name on there is uh, Jason and Robbie, it's Jason Neal. He came to me a year ago and said, you know, I'll, my dream is as most men are, I wanna make a shirt. And you ha unfortunately have to go through all the way through the classes and he did it and now he's posting making shirts. But mm -hmm. I go through it and I, I deny more people to our class than I accept because it, it is um, exactly what Dwayne said. It's a very precise art in making a shirt and you have to do, be very precise and slow down your sewing. But once you've finished a, a tailored shirt class, your sewing becomes more enjoyable because you, you enjoy all those small details that make such a big impact. Yes. Um, you mentioned tips, um, two tips that I could share, which are, I was going to write a book a long, long time ago on tailored shirt making, but never did because I guess I'm lazy and I'm a man, so most men are lazy, but there you go. Um, but I will say, uh, one is when I put my interfacing on my collar, my collar stand and my cuffs, I use two layers. So I put the first layer on and then I remove the seam allowance from the second layer and then I place it centered. So when I sew through it, I'll be only sewing through one layer of interfacing, but there are two layers of interfacing to give more stiffness to the collar and the placket, uh, the collar and the cuffs. That's the one that both of my students are surprised when we do that. Um, that is a interesting thing. I noticed one lady just commented about women's shirts. When we teach the tailored shirt class, we make each student go through each of the steps and it's the hardest shirt that you will make because we only do flat felt seams and we make a shirt that will be um, similar to a shirt on the shelves of Harry Rose and or a high end department store. Mm -hmm. And it will look perfect and professional, but they'll also understand all the steps to making a shirt, but it is a boxy shirt. So at the end, a lot of women say, well, you know, I have curves, what can I do? So what we normally do after is we take in and we put beautiful darts down the back, which contours mm -hmm. the woman. So it gives them a, something a little bit different mm -hmm. and it looks like a tailored shirt for work, but it is feminine and elegant rather than a boxy baggy shirt. Okay. Now, Daryl, you mentioned uh, just before that you were talking about how you did the interfacing in your um, cut, your uh, sleep bands, your um, plackets in your collar, but yeah. is there any specific um, that you prefer interfacing that you prefer? We have, um, we carry interfacing in our store and our interfacing is from a manufacturer that sells to the garment district. So it's professional um, tailored shirt uh, uh, interfacing. But we have one from another supplier, which is a cotton and it's a woven. And it's mm -hmm. very, um, it's not super firm, but it's firm enough. And it's mm -hmm. really nice because it does, when you cut the second layer, it really does it keep it stiff and it does not um, pucker. Regarding puckering on interfacing, a lot of websites say, make sure you use a lot of steam. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I don't use steam. Um, when I'm sewing, on, uh, pressing on my interfacing, first of all, pressing is putting an iron down onto the interfacing. It's not moving it back and forth, that's ironing. So when you, I place my first piece of interfacing down, I put my hot iron down for 20 seconds. I lift, I reset it, and I move it over. When I'm doing this, the glue is actually melting underneath the iron. So as I explained to my students, it's like 
you're melting the glue and it's becoming a river. If you push steam, you're blowing bubbles in the river that will never, it'll never dry. So it's easier to remove the, the interfacing and it'll bubble and wash. So I use hot iron, no steam. Once it's pressed, absolutely use steam and make sure it's set. But my first setting, I don't use steam, I use a hot iron. Okay, thank you. That's a great tip. You're welcome. Thank you. How many shirts have you made, do you think, Daryl? Oh my God, I'm too old to answer that question. <laughs> I don't know. I used to make a lot more of my clothes, but actually it's funny, I've been following Dwayne's Instagram account and writing him because he makes amazing clothes and I love his style and I think it's just fantastic. And then I see that he's on this show. So I thought, oh my God, it's funny that we finally get to meet on your show um, because we kind of met each other online, which is really amazing. And I didn't get a chance to tell him, but his last name is McLeod and my family name is McLeod. So we could be related, which is so wow. funny. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> Small world, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Oh, I really appreciate that you came back on the show, Daryl, and that you well, shared you. those tips with us. Yes. It's fun. Thank you so, so much. No problem. Okay. okay. Anything else for us before you go? Um, no, not unless you had a question, but no. okay. uh, I'm all good. See, does okay. anyone have any questions before we move on? No. <laughs> so we'll hopefully Perfect. see you next time. Yeah. Absolutely. Or we'll see you at Frock Tales in Ottawa. I knew you yeah. were going to see it. I knew you were going to see it. <laughs> well, I'm going to announce Dwayne. Dwayne has to come to Frock Tales too. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> there you go. It's um, a group affair now. Yeah, really. We did get one question. Um, thanks, Mary, for that. Um, she wanted to know if you have a favorite fabric that you use when you make shirts. Good question. Great question, Mary. Um, actually, uh, I love sewing with cotton, but the one I'm wearing now is actually a Dupioni silk. So when Ooh. I worked for a, another co fabric company, they had Dupioni silk and my boss introduced me to it and said, well, Dupioni silk is only made for women. You can't use this. And I thought, only made for women. You know how women hate that when you say it's only made for a man. Well, I hate it when it says it's only made for a woman. So I got a small remnant and I thought, how do I make this? In so I thought, you know what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I threw it in the washing machine, I threw it in the dryer, and it comes out beautiful. So you can get Dupioni silk. So my rule is I buy two and a half meters of Dupioni silk, I throw it in the washer, I throw it in the dryer for 10 minutes, I iron it up, it's flat, and then I can iron it on, uh, I can wash it after that on cold only and never dry again. But it gives you a nice fluid shirt and you have movement. You don't have that rigidity. Oh, so cool. I really like those yeah so it's another thing to use silk for because when people come in for dupioni silk they can only think of evening wear or ball gowns but yeah. no you can make beautiful sundresses you can make blouses you can make tailored shirts you can do anything hmm yeah. thank you for that tip I'm yeah. give that a try <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay well uh we have one more person coming on so otherwise we talk to you all night daryl because yes. you know how you love talking Fantastic. to you <laughs> Thank okay, you well, have much. a great evening. All right, bye. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye bye. Goodness, so talented. Yeah, I've learned so much already tonight. Me too. Me too. <laughs> okay, and then last but not least, the fabulous, the amazing. Um, I was joking around, I was calling her the pattern whisperer. So, <laughs> um, the fabulous Topeka. Topeka. Yes, everyone knows her as the founder of Pattern Review. I know I'm on there a lot reviewing patterns. Um, she does have a wonderful community that she um, is the founder of. Um, just so helpful, everyone is. Hey, welcome back, you guys Topeka. Are so nice to me that Pattern Whisperer <laughs> is already taken, though, by the fabulous Ann Whaley. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna have I'll to think about another why name. Why don't why don't I be the the pattern um magician? No, it's just no, you. No, no, no. The, the reason why nerd. I like, how's that? I like nerd. The, pa <laughs> the I like pattern. Nerd. Can we call it the pattern nerd? Because I can actually look at people's clothes and actually tell what pattern they're wearing. It, it is true. The, I've seen you do it. It's gotta be the nerdy thing. 
it well it's almost a superpower like yes. we, i was at pattern <laughs> review weekend last year and somebody walks by with a shirt she's like that's a such and such pattern that's a such and such yep. pattern you know like get out just, of here yeah, oh my gee. goodness <laughs> yeah <laughs> well thank you it is quite an honor being here and um you know i can i have five minutes is that right yep uh well, okay. yeah no you can have 10 if you have the time i don't i'm not trying to push you for time but yeah if okay you, Go so for it. We want to hear your tip. If I have ten minutes, if I have ten minutes, <laughs> I want to address uh, the whole the shirt making thing. And of mm -hmm. course, I um, um, there are two types of people, in my opinion, the shirt making type and the non shirt making type. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes. So the non shirt making type are the people who get into shirt making because we want to learn. We want to expand our sewing skills, even though um, maybe we don't make shirts because it doesn't fit in with our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but at least that's how I feel. And that's why I got into shirt making um, because I like a good challenge. And I think uh, there are so many aspects of shirt making which are which are good teaching moments like you know beautiful top stitching um you know how to get those collar points um you know the first time i used a clap art was on a shirt and i have that um i gotta tell you i'm not the person to give you tips on that but i bought this and i'm in my sewing room so i can actually show you i bought this like crazy looking thing on etsy um, it's called the June Taylor. It's obviously going to be upside. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. It's called the Taylor board. And this thing is so awesome. It looks cool. Wow. Yeah, so be, I can actually, all the shirts which I've made, I, I mean, obviously, I wear dresses, so I make shirt dresses. Um, the collar point I insert here. And this thing, in my opinion, if you like to make shirts, is, is a godsend. Cool. Cool. It's called um, Taylor Board by June Taylor. I've never seen one like that. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And it folds flat. It's... Which is even wow. better for storage. Yeah, it is. It is. Wow. And you just put it on the ironing board. It's all wood. And um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It, it works uh. really well for all those. So yeah, I think of shirt making as like expanding your um, sewing knowledge. Um, okay, so I am here to talk about women's shirts patterns. I didn't know that was a man shirt thing because no, no, it's, it wasn't no, meant to be men no, or ladies' no. shirts, just shirts in general. Yes. Okay, shirts in general. Because yeah, I love my husband, but I'm not gonna make shirts for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not happening. Please. <laughs> Um, all right, so I am going to, I have collected um, a few patterns, the ones I've selected. I think one of these will work for you because they're all like good patterns. Um, th there is one with the princess seams, um, which I think works a little bit better if you have like a little bit larger bust. And I think it's like fitting is just slightly easier in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree. Which one was that? I found that for myself. I found that for myself. The one, uh, which that shirt doesn't fit me anymore, by the way. <laughs> but the one shirt which I did make was an old Berta pattern, and it was princess seams. And I was pretty amazed at how well it, it was it fit me. Uh, OK, so let's look at the first one, which is a Soaholic Granville. And this is a fitted shirt pattern with um, you know, or darts, it, it's super fitted. Like it has all the, yes. you know, yeah. things, the features you want in a fitted shirt. It has the collar, it has a stand up collar and not like the, you know, the other collar. I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've seen that quite a bit on um, pattern review. Yeah, and it's it's been uh, several times best pattern of the year winner for mm -hmm. good reason. It's got your pockets. It's, I mean, basically it's got a short tail hem. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, one. Now mm -hmm. the second one is the. Um, it may not come as a surprise to you. Is the grain line puncher? 
Archer. <laughs> yeah, this is a widely popular pattern for those of you who are looking for something slightly relaxed fit. It is uh, not a fitted pattern. Um, you you probably have seen like you know hundred plus reviews of this pattern, but yeah. again, it's still it's still a very good, well drafted pattern. Um, you know, one view is just like your classic shirt, but it's like a little bit relaxed, but it still gives you the yoke, it gives you the pockets, plackets, yeah. and all of that stuff. And of course, you know, Jen's instructions are amazing. She is a sew along. Uh, you cannot go wrong with it. So, I just purchased that pattern, Dapika. I love it. I haven't made it yet. I just purchased it. So I'm looking forward. This this will be my first one, I believe. Oh, you'll love it. You'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, the other one, which I also like, is the Green Line Alder, which is a shirt dress pattern. And I have made that several times. Um, I wore my Kathy shirt, shirt dress. Yeah. So that one is a shirt dress. It is a sleeveless pattern. Um, and I, I just, I just love, I just love this pattern so much. It fits me well. Wow. And again, all of the features you want in a classic shirt. Love that. Works, That's beautiful. Works really well. I've made it twice. I've made it in a rayon, which is a drapey fabric. Um, and I've made it in a quilting cotton mm -hmm. and, uh, both of them work equally well. I mean, I get compliments on the quilting cotton, like every single time I wear it. Oh, wow, beautiful. It's probably because I use the Canada fabric. <laughs> I celebrated your 150, you know, Canada 150. That was so kind of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're trying to butter yeah. someone up over there, Topeka. <laughs> she oh, had me at hello. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to give you um, McCall's 7387. Cool. Um, I have this one. This, I bought it, it from Pattern Review. I bought wow. this one from yeah, you. This one's really cool. It, it really spoke to me because um, I love that slight. So I think it doesn't have the collar, but it has a collar stem. So it kind of gives you the little relaxed, um, more like Mandarin collar, kind of like it's summer and I'm cool mm -hmm. and don't, can't be bothered with, you know, <laughs> collar kind of situation. Um, now, yeah, what is that, the blue one with the model? Yeah, is that, it almost looked like it was ballooned out, but it's not. It's just a shirt tail, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shirt tail. And also, you will notice that this one um, actually has that hidden placket. So that's like another okay. skill you can add to your, you know. Um, another pattern, which is very similar to this, is Deer and Doe Melilo pattern. but. Uh, I have not made that, and I actually have not made this one also. But they're both good patterns, but very similar mm -hmm. to that one. So yeah, like if you're looking for a hidden placket, um, I have another one for you. It is, uh, yes, that one. It's That's, very, very similar. If you want to look at the line drawing, wow. uh, it's Deer very, and Joe. Yeah, it's very similar to the McCall's one. Oh yeah. And I should although, mention that. Well, yeah, they, that one actually. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I should mention that you were nice enough to send me the links to all of these. So I put them in the description for everyone in case you want to um, see these again. Yay. Um, all right. So the next one I have for you is Jolie Rose 3881. And this is also a sleeveless pattern, uh, kind of like the, the alder, but it has like a little flutter sleeve. So if you want a little bit like more fun and flirty look, again, this is also not a very fitted. Um, okay, so I have a question here, a simple to sew, and I have just the pattern for you. It is by Maria Denmark, and it is called the, why am I, eat it. It is the eat it blouse pattern. I actually wanted to wear it today, but I got lazy. So <laughs> uh, the the Maria Denmark Edith blouse pattern is fantastic. It is so easy, and it is um, it, it like actually doesn't have a sleeve. It's just like a cut on like cap sleeve. It just kind of goes extended shoulder, and mm -hmm. it comes in three different cup sizes too. And uh, it's very, very simplified. It doesn't have a collar stain, but just has like that open collar. Um, that is the one shirt I wear all the time. 
And it was Edith Denmark? I think I think it's the Edith, but I'm gonna look it up right now, actually. Um, it is the, I'm pretty sure it's the Edith blouse. Yeah, it is the Edith blouse. Um, and that is very easy for beginners. The other one is, yeah, it is oh, Edith blouse. I, yeah, I just found a photo of it okay. here. I'll pull it up super quick. Sorry, it took me a bit there. Um, whoops. Isn't like yeah. when I stick yeah. my thing it is in it so, oh, it is yeah. so quick. It is very, very quick to sew and it's drafted well. It will, you will, you cannot go wrong with it, but it doesn't have the stand, uh, it doesn't have pockets, but it's a very good pattern to, to sew and it fits well. Drafted well as well. Um, very cool. And finally, I have the last pattern. Um, actually, no, I have a few others. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pattern nerd. I like the name. <laughs> Uh, new look 6407. Hmm. Okay. And this is an older pattern, and I know that new look patterns don't get the love they deserve, but you guys like 499 can't go wrong. Yeah. Oh, I have that one. Yeah. That and one's been out for a while. It's been out for a while. It's got a yeah. lot of reviews. It's like look, look, look at the details. It's got that waist seams, the you know the darts and um not the seam the darts and the different like collar styles different mm -hmm. i mean it's basically everything and easy to sew too i can verify that easy to sew and great fit yeah i was actually kathy i was actually gonna uh, mention the liesel pattern as well liesel came out with a pattern called woman's shirt um, and I was gonna, see, but I mean, I can go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think uh, one of the other ones you had was the cashmere. Yeah, so I want to mention uh, two more because I think they offer something slightly different. The cashmere is the princess seam one, which oh, yeah. I wanted to mention, and uh, again, like classic shirt yeah. details in this one fits well. It's, it's and look at the, the double Harrison. princess seams. That's a double princess seam? It's a double princess seam. It has two princess seams, which I don't think I've seen anywhere else. Me cool. either. Yeah. And it's got that in the, the back is also fitted with the yoke and uh, princess seams in the back and the placket and all of those things which you're looking for in a well-fitted wow. shirt pattern. That's and then amazing. She also, yeah. And then this, as you know, is for sizes 12 to 28 and um, different cup sizes as well. And that's the Harrison shirt. That's the Harrison shirt. Mm -hmm. And she also has an expansion pack in which you can make that into a dress. Wow, nice, very nice. Yeah, and, uh, and the, finally, the last one I have is for those of you who are looking to, I mean, we can't talk about shirts and not talk about the Western style shirt. <laughs> um, so, which um, this one, is i forget the number of it i just included a six, link. Eight, four, nine. 6849 um and i mean it's slightly western i guess like not like your typical western but like if you you know how some of us are just like oh whoa i can't go all western yeah but <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i understand that so um yeah so it's like a little bit of the details if you want you can leave them out uh, I do, I have a little bit of a soft spot for Burda patterns because my first pattern was a Burda pattern and my first um, fitted shirt pattern was also a Burda pattern. Mm -hmm. I do think that they get overlooked with, you know, the sea of patterns we have now. It's worth, it's worth, I hope this was helpful. It was, it's worth a look. Wow, um, you gave us some nice options there. Very I know, nice I tried to do it as fast as I could. <laughs> that was an amazing list. Yeah, thank you so much. That must have taken quite a while. And coming from someone who deals with patterns yeah. every day, all day, and sees all those reviews, I mean, it's yeah, that's amazing. The pattern nerd. The pattern nerd. <laughs> Let's call me the nerd. I love it. I love it. I love being the pattern nerd. Okay. okay and if we're so... really lucky for some of our other um, 
special months, we might get you to come back for one of the tip shows when you're free. Um, probably not every month, but maybe another one if we're lucky. Because, um, yeah, you do. You have this fantastic knowledge base. So we're thrilled to have you join us. I would love to come. I mean, I, I love, I live, breathe patterns every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, and I like I like a nice challenge and I like to give options for people because I do believe that there isn't a single pattern which works for every single person. Um, sure. you know, we're we're different in in our body types and we're different in the kind of styles we like. So I think there's a pattern for everyone out there. So if I'm and helpful in way. even the slightest way, um, you know, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to help. Daryl <laughs> Daryl called you the pattern diva. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I'm not a diva. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope I'm not a diva. <laughs> the, the pattern down to earth diva. <laughs> I would like the nerd. I would the very nerd. much like the nerd. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I will oh, own the title. So uh, the whole reason my daughter came the other day from school and she's like, mommy, um, she was like a little bit sad. I'm like, what happened? Oh. Ellie, so my daughter wears glasses and she loves to read. So like Ellie called me a nerd today, and um, and then immediately I changed my expression. I'm like, oh really? <laughs> How nice! She was like confused. Like, what's going? I'm like, do you know nerds are actually smart people? They're like, nerd is actually a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so and then I they completely changed the whole outlook. You know that. Yeah. Um, she called her a nerd because she wears glasses and she reads a lot. Uh -huh. So, yay for nerds! Good thing. <laughs> that was Good thing. Quick, quick thinking on your feet. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Full time job. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, well, thanks again for joining us and oh, yeah. for having me and sharing those fantastic tips. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And patterns. Pattern. And patterns. Yes. The June Taylor thing. I don't know if it's still available. I bought mine. Uh, a long time ago. I don't know if it's still a thing, but if you can find it, I do think that it's a valuable tool and not just for shorts, but I use it for other things as well. So, okay. Very cool. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs> Goodness me. Wow. So uh, next week on the show, we have, I just went completely blank. Can you remember Myra? <laughs> oh, oh my how, goodness. Uh, oh, how did I, how did I forget? Next week on the show, we have the amazing, fabulous uh, Johanna from The Last Stitch. How could I forget that? I know. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And she we can't just released her that. first, uh, second book. Second book. book. Cover, and cover stitch. stitch and it's yes. it's going, it's selling very well and she is an amazing author she really like the photos yeah. all the like she describes everything brilliantly so yeah i know this book will be just as fabulous as her first one which was on sewing activewear so please yes. join us next week for that actually and this one has outdone that one she said we have to let you go for now and we'll see all of you again next week tuesday on another wonderful episode of that sewing blab so those of you We'll see ya. Bye now.